Citizens for Civic Renewal and the Hamilton County Regional Planning Commission. So good to see folks that I haven't seen in a bit. And uh, I wanted to thank Ed, Bill, and Alice for their hospitality and uh, letting me talk a little bit about our Green Cincinnati Plan update. Um, you know, how did we kind of get here uh, is where I wanted to start. Uh, the New York Times, I think just two weeks ago, said, uh, oh my goodness, we're at 400 parts per million uh, CO2 in the atmosphere. And uh, that was one of those milestones that uh, kind of made you step back and think a little bit, particularly when you uh, start to look at some of the historical data on this uh, little fact. Uh, if you look at the chart on the left there, you can see for the past 650,000 years or so, uh, we've been staying in this range roughly between about 175 and uh, 300 uh, parts per million. So uh, things have fluctuated. You know, there's a lot of talk about, well, the, you know, ice ages and things change. And stuff. But if you look at the very tip of that graph and uh, some of the close ups, you know, if you look at the last 12,000 years, you can see a uh, really significant jump in that in the last uh, little bit of time. So, how many years is that? So, if you look out, it, it, it really is, we went above 300 in the, in the right as the Industrial Revolution really got cranking. So if you look at the far right chart, that's when we first, in 1950, is when we first kind of went above <coughs> what we had seen historically. And that's just been continuing on uh, until present day. So um, just to give us a little context of you know, why are we doing this work at the city of Cincinnati and, and how does this Um, we also are looking not just at climate uh, change, and of course that gives uh, pause and, and gets us motivated to do this good work, but we're developing this plan with a larger lens of sustainability in mind. So you've probably heard of the triple bottom line, or uh, the three E's, or uh, people, uh, profit, and, uh, and uh, planet. So the three E's would be environment, equity, and, and uh, economics. Uh, so really what that triple bottom line is that we can't just focus solely on one of these aspects of our community. When we just focus on economy, uh, often we tear up the environment and, and aren't looking uh, at, at human health and uh, human wellness and quality of life. If we just look at the environment, sometimes uh, we create a, a place where we don't have the dollars to actually implement the things. So uh, this is a relatively new line of thinking that we have to be looking at all three of these pillars uh, when we're thinking about sustainability in the community. So uh, back in 2008, when we first created the Green Cincinnati Plan, the focus was primarily on climate. It was called the Climate Protection Action Plan, CPAP, uh, which became known as the Green Cincinnati Plan, but the major metric was how we were reducing the greenhouse gas emissions of city government and the greater city community. We're broadening that a bit here in our five-year update to think about things, uh, all things sustainable, and use this to the bottom line as a frame. All right, quiz time. Uh, what's going on here that looks sustainable to you? Solar panels. There's solar panels out there in the market. Does anyone know that? Yeah. They're one of the first city facilities to, to put on solar panels. So that's definitely one that Kind of blends in with that roof a little bit, that this part roof, so uh, that's a good call. Anybody see anything else that you would think would be in the plan or something we're proud of in the city that we're trying to do is sustainable? Local produce. Local produce, exactly, yeah. So we're, uh, more and more we're trying to grow our food more locally. Sometimes that means it's in the greater region. Sometimes it means it's right in an urban neighborhood you would never think would have uh, produce growing in. But uh, over the line, there's a couple of little gardens, community gardens in it. Produces solar in the market. Anything else? Plants. Great. Yeah, green. So street trees you can kind of see on the right, and then some planters uh, down low, the window boxes, and then the trees in the background. I mean, that's one of the things that really sets us apart from a lot of Midwestern cities is that uh, hilly, hilly woods, wooded hillsides, right, uh, that are out there, uh, and those trees are helping us on a lot of environmental fronts. 
challenge, right? They're uh, slowing down stormwater from getting to our, our streams. Uh, they provide cooling effect uh, in the summertime. Uh, they're sequestering the carbon, they're pulling some of that CO2 in. So those trees are a big help for us and, and something that uh, not every kid must be city for sure has uh, the abundance of tree cover. A couple other little things that uh, you can see. Uh, there's been plan Cincinnati just uh, got adopted here about a year ago. And a lot of the, what that was talking about is how we've got good bones as a city for doing environmental work. Uh, Sustain was one of the pieces in Plan Cincinnati, uh, one of the, the chapters. And part of that was about places just like this that are dense, uh, where people, it's easy to walk the things. Uh, you can live in a, 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 an apartment or a townhouse, and you know, lo and behold, you don't have to heat and cool all four walls. Uh, you're sharing that with some other so that creates efficiency for uh, heating and cooling. Uh, just getting around, like uh, walking and walking in transit becomes easier uh, when we have these mixed use communities. So the density of the old core, uh, the mixed use nature of it, it is something that uh, our city uh, definitely offers. Um, I think that's it. Probably jumps up right now. So the Green Cincinnati Plan uh, update, or as we call it, the 2013 Green Cincinnati Plan, uh, has 10 chapters. I'm going to take you quickly through those 10 chapters, uh, just to give you a flavor of what's in them. Uh, it's energy efficiency, renewable energy, uh, transportation, waste reduction, land management, land use, food, water, outdoor recreation, nature awareness, and climate adaptation. So those are the top areas that we've and then I want to try to keep that frame of that triple bottom line. So what I'm going to try to do is offer an example of what we're doing or what we're planning on doing um, to on each one of those uh, topic areas that kind of shows how we're helping both the environment, economics, and, uh, and equity. So the first is energy efficiency. Uh, even Duke Energy, uh, uh, Jim Ryder, you know, their CEO, likes to say, you know, the cheapest power plant is the one we don't have to build, right? I mean, so energy efficiency is the first thing out of the gate, right? If you're not using the power, uh, it doesn't cost you money, if you don't have fossil fuel emissions from not using it, uh, so that, that's definitely the way to go. And the city has been leading on this. Uh, part of the first uh, plan, the 2008 plan, called for doing energy efficiency work in the city. And we did that work on about 80 or so structures, facilities in the city, and are saving a million dollars a year in energy costs. So that's, that's big time, and, and particularly in these budget times. Uh, so that did go straight to save uh, money in the general fund, but all the energy efficiency improvements are being paid for with that savings. So uh, it was a way to not have to spend any capital money from the city. Uh, you use these energy savings to do all those improvements. And then you think about who did those improvements. Right? Was it some coal mine in West Virginia? If we had used that power in a regular way, no. It, it, were, it was local firms here in the city uh, creating jobs in uh, the worst recession since the Great Depression. So uh, that was 15 million dollars of work that was out on the street during that time. So there, there's those three pieces of uh, economy, environment, and equity. You know, when we're not building or burning that fossil fuel, that means we got better air quality. Those coal power plants are you know, not inside the city, but they're right outside or within the, the regional limits. So we're, we're impacted by those air emissions, uh, the mercury, the carbon dioxide, the nitrous oxide, all those pollutants that uh, come from those coal power plants. Now I should say that the, I like this little progression that I use on this slide, where this is cool because anyone in our community can join an energy efficiency group, right? All it takes is behavior change first. Turn off the light when you leave the room. Make sure the TV's off. You know, no investment. You don't have to pay for anything to do that. Also, you can lower your energy bill just by being a little more careful about what you do. Air dry those dishes instead of using the heated setting on your dishwasher. Uh, air dry your clothes if you've got a chance to do that. So, maybe not on a day like today, but... Uh, uh, so, and then that can lead to savings area. You can make some of those modest investments, like changing out your light bulbs or doing some caulking or things like that. And then you get into bigger energy efficiency investments, perhaps insulation, uh, more